That's kind of conversation between the soul. That's conversation between the soul and the night. Hello, Prestige Heads, and welcome to American Prestige. I'm Danny Bessner, here as always with my friend and comrade, Derek Davison. Uh, and we are excited to welcome to the podcast Javier Puente. Javier is an associate professor of Latin American and Latino uh, Studies and chair of Latin American and Latino uh, Studies at Smith College. And he's also the author of The Rural State, Making Comunidades Campesinos, uh, Campesinos and Conflict in Peru's Central Sierra. So we're going to talk to him about Peru. So Javier, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you, Derek, uh, for the invitation. Happy to be with your audience today. Uh, So let's just get into the basics. What has happened literally? What do we know? What don't we know? Mm -hmm. So um, I think we have to start with uh, some sort of uh, disaggregation of the sequence of events and uh, looking at at least two separate events that are intertwined but require this uh, very basic disaggregation. So a couple of days ago um, at 11.40 a.m., uh, Pedro Castillo, a constitutionally elected president of Peru since 2021, attempted to inconstitutionally and illegally dissolve the Congress. He tried to use a very peculiar interpretation, interpretation of his capacity to conduct this measure, but it was out of rule. And in trying to dissolve the, con- the Congress without constitutional backup, he, in fact, uh, attempted to deliver a coup. In many ways, the same way that Alberto Fujimori did back in April 5th, 1992. So after this first event, the Congress um, summoned all congressmen and congresswomen and decidedly, decided to finally um, impeach Pedro Castillo. Uh, I use the term impeachment because I am resorting on the typical translation of this measure, but in fact, it's a presidential vacancy on the grounds of uh, moral incapacity, which is, which is a very unique article that the Peruvian constitution in still holds. And over the last four to five years, it's an article that has been weaponized by the Congress to help control of uh, the presidential power and to bring the country into this institutional disarray in which we are now. Uh, Javier, before we get into uh, Pedro Castillo a little deeper and and his, um, you know, the ups and downs of his uh, brief time as president, uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I think we are on, if my math is right, we're on the sixth Peruvian president in six years, since 2016. Um, and as you say, this the, the morality clause has been sort of weaponized by Congress to uh, run through presidents. Can you talk a little bit about that context and sort of the overall state of Peruvian politics right now? Yes. Um, so um, I think I have explained elsewhere how there is a way in which we can see these specific political crises in Peru as yet another episode of a a short term of uh, political instability that has been plaguing Peru since March of 2018, when a different Congress, uh, a different Congress in terms of the identities of Congresswomen and Congressmen, but with roughly the same kind of political alignments, decided to vacate, uh, morally vacate, uh, President Pedro Pablo Kuczynski. And then what followed after the vacancy of Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, who had been elected president in 2016, was this sequence of events that have led to have six presidents over the course of five years. Um, There is yet another way of looking at these um, uh, events of of political instability in sort of like a more long-term or medium-term perspective that will bring us back to the 1990s, to the rise of Fujimorismo as the most important political power of the country, as the, um, um, along with the um, collapse of the party system in Peru, and the fact that since 1993, with the exception probably of the...